Isn't this magic? You're sitting at a coffee shop, you connect to the Wi-Fi network, and like magic, you're online. No complicated setup, no manual configuration, just instant access. But have you ever stopped to wonder, how does your device know exactly which IP address to use? Behind the scenes, there's a silent operator making it all happen, DHCP. In today's video, we'll pull back the curtain on this essential protocol and reveal how it takes the hassle out of network connectivity, making it as easy as a single click. In today's world, getting online is something we hardly think about. You connect your device to Wi-Fi, open up your laptop or power up your smart TV and within seconds you're online. But behind this seamless experience is a protocol that makes it all possible. DHCP, which stands for the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Before DHCP, became the norm, connecting to networks felt like a high maintenance relationship. Constant manual configurations, entering IP addresses, subnet masks, gateways, ah, exhausting. Every device needed a unique IP address and worse, if you move to a different network, you'd have to reconfigure everything from scratch. This chaos was not only time consuming, but error prone, leading to issues like IP address conflicts where two devices shared the same IP address. Imagine assigning the same parking spot to two cars. Neither is going anywhere without some honking going on. Enter DHCP, the knight in shining armor for network administrators everywhere. DHCP automates the process of assigning IP addresses to devices as soon as they connect to the network, sparing us all from the drudgery of manual configuration. It's fast, reliable, and scales effortlessly whether you're managing a small home network or a enterprise level system with hundreds and hundreds of devices. DHCP handles everything from IP addresses to subnet masks, default gateways, and DNS server information. All this without breaking a sweat or causing an IP traffic jam. But how does it actually work? The DHCP server plays a crucial role in assigning IP addresses to devices and can be located in different parts of the network. In home networks, the DHCP server is typically built into your router. Managing IP addresses is distribution for devices like smartphones, laptops, smart home devices. In larger enterprise networks, DHCP servers are often dedicated machines or virtual servers that handle IP management across multiple subnets and network segments. Sometimes these servers are located in data centers and manage remote offices using what's called DHCP relay agents. DHCP operates at the application layer of the TCP IP model and stack. Check out our video on the TCP IP model here. DHCP is responsible for the assignment of dynamic IP addresses and other network configuration details like the subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server. These details are key for normal network operation and communication, ensuring that all devices can efficiently communicate both within and outside of the local network. So what exactly are they? A subnet mask is a 32-bit number used to divide an IP address into network and host portions. It helps devices on the network identify which part of the IP address refers to the network and which part refers to the specific device or host 
on that network. This is essential for routing traffic within and outside of a network. The default gateway is the device on the network that routes traffic from a local network to other networks, typically to the internet. When a device doesn't know the route to a specific destination, it sends the traffic to the default gateway, which handles the communication outside of the local network. The domain name system, DNS server, translates domain names such as deskcert.com into their corresponding IP addresses. This is important because devices communicate using IP addresses, but humans typically use domain names. The DNS server provides the necessary translation for this communication. Port 68 used by the DHCP client, which is your device, to receive the network information, including the IP address from the DHCP server. These ports facilitate the exchange of messages between the client and the server, which happens in four key steps known as the DORA process. Hola, soy Dora. Can you say escuela? That means school in No, it's not a lost episode of Dora the Explorer, but it is a journey your device takes every time it joins a network and it stands for, Dora does, discovery, offer, request, and acknowledge. Here's how it works. When your device connects to a network, it sends out a DHCP discover message, broadcasting a request to locate a DHCP server. This message is sent over port 68 from the client asking, is there a DHCP server out there that can give me an IP address? The DHCP server listening on port 67 is ready to respond to these requests. Upon receiving the discovery message, the DHCP server responds with a DHCP offer, which contains an available IP address along with the subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server settings. The server essentially says, here's an IP address you can use. This offer is sent back to the client on port 68. Once the client receives the offer, it replies with a DHCP request message. This message serves as the client's way of accepting the server's offer, saying, I'd like to use that IP address, please. It also informs the server that the client is requesting that specific IP address, signaling that the offer is accepted. Finally, the DHCP server sends a DHCP acknowledge message, officially confirming the assignment of the IP address to the client. At this point, the configuration is complete and the client can begin communicating over the network using its newly assigned IP address. While DHCP is typically used to assign temporary IP addresses, it can also assign what are called permanent IP addresses through a process called DHCP reservation. This allows certain critical devices, such as servers or printers on the network, to always receive the same IP address, even though they are still using DHCP. Now let's break down the difference between these two methods. Think of an IP lease like renting a car. It's not yours forever, but you get to use it for a set period of time. When your device gets an IP address from the DHCP server, it's only temporary. After a set period of time called the lease time, your device has to either renew the lease or return the IP address to the network pool. This is super handy, especially in dynamic networks like coffee shops or large corporate networks where devices come and go. When a device disconnects, 
that IP address eventually goes back into the pool ready for the next customer, like returning your rental car so someone else can use it. Now, some devices like servers or printers need a permanent parking spot. That's where DHCP reservation comes in. With the reservation, it's like buying a car. You get to keep it. The DHCP server assigns the same IP address to these devices every time they connect. This ensures that important devices always have a consistent, reliable IP address, which is essential for things like accessing a printer or a file server that needs to be easily found on the network. Now, all great power comes with responsibility, and DHCP is no exception. While DHCP makes network management easier, it also introduces some security risks. One significant risk is the possibility of a rogue DHCP server. Rogue is never a good word in networks. An attacker could set up a rogue DHCP server on the network, which would send out false DHCP responses to devices tricking them into connecting to a malicious network. This could lead to severe consequences, such as redirecting users to phishing websites, intercepting their traffic, or launching man-in-the-middle attacks, where the attacker secretly relays and possibly alters communication between two parties. To mitigate this, Network administrators often implement DHCP snooping, a security feature that monitors and restricts DHCP messages within the network. By filtering out untrusted DHCP servers and only allowing responses from legitimate ones, DHCP snooping ensures that only authorized DHCP servers can assign IP addresses to devices. Additionally, other security measures like dynamic ARP address resolution protocol inspection or DAI and IP source guard are often used to further protect the network. Dynamic ARP inspection, DAI, helps prevent ARP poisoning attacks, where an attacker sends malicious ARP packets to a default gateway on a LAN in order to change the pairings in its IP to MAC address table. DAI ensures the integrity of ARP messages by validating them against the trusted information collected by DHCP snooping. IP source guard is a feature that helps prevent IP spoofing attacks, where an attacker tries to impersonate another device by using its IP address. IP source guard works by filtering out traffic that doesn't match the device its assigned IP address, effectively blocking unauthorized devices from using IP addresses they don't own. By combining these security measures, DHCP snooping, dynamic ARP inspection, and IP source guard, network administrators can significantly reduce the risks associated with rogue DHCP servers and other network-based attacks. In conclusion, so next time you connect to a Wi-Fi network at a coffee shop or log in to your home network, take a moment to appreciate the seamless experience DHCP provides and how it keeps networks running smoothly and effortlessly. For more in-depth training and resources, including preparing for certifications like the CISSP, the CCSP, the CISM, for example, feel free to check out our site at deskcert.com. Until next time, stay secure and may your IPs always be conflict-free. Stay safe online.